But um, let's talk about the first video and the planes. The planes on the plane. So uh, what, uh, explain the runways and all of that like you did in your video, in case there's somebody who hasn't, hasn't watched it yet. Okay, well, in the, in the problem, I, uh, I based it off of a, a flight I actually took in college. I, we, we were able to get a uh, direct flight from, I went to school at the University of North Florida in Jacksonville, and uh, in one of my senior projects, we, we actually uh, uh, did very well in a competition and got to fly to LA to compete nationally, and uh, we found a, a direct flight to, to LAX, and so that's, that was a good amount of distance, and it was, I mean, the, the two airports are roughly on the same latitude you know, compared to the, the whole size of the Earth. So I, I decided to set up a problem where uh, the plane flies, the return flight flies from an airport at LAX directly towards an airport or an airport at uh, Jacksonville International Airport, and it's, it's hypothetical. Uh, in the problem, we assume that the two airports are on the same latitude, so the plane never really has to turn north or south during the flight. It just flies due east. And uh, uh, we also assume, and the problem, I, I wish I would have reiterated this more when I was, when I was talking about it, is that we are a stationary observer looking at the Earth. So we can see the Earth and the plane rotating together at the same time. So you do have to account for both velocities. And uh, you know, when, when, you, when you actually calculate the velocity of the Earth, at the, what it would have to be at the equator if the circumference is uh, just under 25,000 miles, I think it's 24,901 miles is what is the accepted mainstream belief. Um, and there's 24 hours a day, in a day, you just divide you know, the circumference 24,901 by 24 hours, and that gives you over 1,000 miles per hour. So that's, that's, that's pretty fast. And, uh, so I, if you, you, you can figure out what the, the velocity would be of the airports a certain distance from the equa equator by using the curvature equation to reduce your diameter and then go from there. So the idea is the Earth is always spinning under the, the plane, but the plane has the initial velocity of the Earth when it takes off, so the speeds are added. But the problem comes into play when the plane tries to turn and land on the runway that's moving uh, because the, the, the plane has gained so much velocity in the air that now when it turns it can't stop flying so the the way relative motion works it still has a component of velocity to the east so it ends up moving faster than the runway it's trying to land on and that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense because we see planes take off and land in all different on, on runways in all different directions north south east west whatever and then the uh, the other major problem i realized is that at 2,000 miles, the curvature, I can't, I think it was around 100, the, the, the amount of curvature that the plane would have to fly over, I think is about 150 miles of vertical curvature. And so, you know, plane flies, when they take off, they get up to a cruising altitude of about 5 miles and or 30,000 feet, 30, 33,000 feet. And, uh, you know, the, the plane takes off and, and, and it's, it's 5 miles in the air and now it has, still has 145 miles of curvature it has to fly over. So how is it going to fly over that curvature unless the pilot is constantly nosing the plane down the whole time? And uh, some people say gravity and I, I pr pr presented my argument to that of why that would actually cause a problem in reverse. And so it's, uh, it's a head scratcher when you, when, you, when you really think about it. Some people, as well as gravity, they say, well, it's built into the uh, autopilot feature. So, I mean, what about people who fly older planes? And there's people that do have older planes out there that don't have that built in. So I say yeah. no to that. Yeah, so um, so continue on with your story. Uh, that, I mean, that's In a nutshell, that's, that's the problem. Um, I, ha I couldn't find an answer. I was asking people, and, of course, people thought I was crazy for even asking this, but I'm saying, well, we don't have an answer. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't figure this out and people say it just does you know planes take off and land every day and I say yes but that doesn't prove that the earth is spinning so I I did the problem over and over again I showed it to a lot of people uh, engineers uh, people with science backgrounds and nobody could really give me a good answer and so that is when I, I decided I've got to put this out there and see what see what, what people say and for the most part, a lot of people agree with me, it seems like. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm always ready to be proven wrong. I, I said in one of my videos, you know, in, in the engineering world, we say, you know, you learn 10, more from your, 10 times more from your mistakes than you do from your success. And I believe that. I think it's more like 100 times more. So, you know, people are always afraid to be wrong, but how can you learn what's right if you're never wrong to figure out what is right? So that's, that's the approach I'm kind of taking here. And uh, 
I'm having <laughs> having trouble proving that flat Earth theory is wrong. So actually, the the evidence is is showing me the uh, that it is actually true. So.